Hey guys, welcome to our first resin tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to do a flood coat on a flat surface. This is a piece of black walnut that uh, has live edge on the edge here. This is actually going to be put on a reception desk that we'll be um, installing in a local uh, salon. So we're pretty excited about that. Right now, I'm just mixing the resin together. I have part A and part B in the container here. And we're just kind of getting it all mixed up. You want to make sure that when you mix that you scrape the edges thoroughly uh, because you'll find that um, sometimes the epoxy doesn't fully mix up very well unless you scrape all the edges and get it all mixed. I usually spend three to five minutes mixing epoxy, especially on a thicker resin, like a countertop resin, um, just because it takes a little longer. You'll see there's a lot of bubbles in this right now, so we're going to go ahead and set this aside and let some of those bubbles rise to the surface and get them popped before we put them on our countertop and start the actual pouring process. So we'll check back in with you in just a minute. Alright, we're back. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do what we call a seal coat right now. Um, that's just to make sure, and I'm actually just going to kind of surface this. It's not going to be the final flood coat right now. We're going to surface it, and we're going to fill in some of these. Uh, there's a little bit of a void right here we want to fill, and uh, some of the softer walnut um, and the wood that's closer to the bark is a white and soft wood. So it's going to soak up the resin a little more. And, um, and then later on, once it's cured again, I'll come back and do a soft sand over the top and do our final flood coat. So today we're just gonna do our seal coat on the top of this. You also notice right here that we have a void that I will be filling as well. So this will get filled up um, with resin. So. So I use a trowel that I actually notched myself. They do have notched trowels that you can pick up um, from Amazon, but I actually just took a plastic uh, um, putty knife and notched it myself with a knife, which works. And this allows me to spread the resin evenly. And distribute it along my table. This way, so you can kind of see how that works there, and just kind of pushes it in front, spreads it out. And push it all the way down as far as it'll go. There, and we'll add more resin. On this seal coat, however, I'm going to go ahead and just take my hands, and this is why you wear gloves, because you'll notice that it's starting to bring up some of the gas. So wood has a tendency to release um, the gas, and if you fill up your resin and you allow it to just sit on there then it will actually um, release that gas and cause a lot of bubbles. But if you take and you seal that wood first, then uh, you can avoid a lot of that issue because it seals up those bubbles, seals up the gas inside the wood, 
And then later on, I can come back and actually finish up with another coat of epoxy over the top. So, some of the tricks of the trade you'll learn as you go. One of the biggest issues I see with uh, beginners is um, trying to flood coat something without sealing it. And, uh, I always see people online asking, how do I get, what do I do about all these bubbles? <laughs> this is what you do about the bubbles. This eliminates them before they happen. The nice thing about a seal coat too is that if you do end up with bubbles, when you come along to do your final coat, you just sand the bubbles out. So you can do a real nice sanding and surface on your epoxy, and then uh, pour over the top of that, and uh, the issues you've got with your bubbles. And it's super satisfying to play in the resin, let me tell you. <laughs> it's just fun. So, I don't know if you can get a shot of this underneath, but, um, when you're working with a live edge or any edge that you want to put epoxy on, um, epoxy has a tendency to flow, of course, because it's a liquid state. And I don't want the epoxy to come underneath here, and you can get a, probably a better idea over here where there's no table in it. Um, I don't want it to come under here and drip off and leave uh, the bumps underneath my slab. So if you get underneath, you can see that I've put a strip of tape all the way up to just right at the very edge of the wood slab so that when those bubbles come down they run over the top of the tape and then later on I can just take the tape off and it removes those drips without having to re-sand and resurface. At least that's the goal. It's not always perfect but it does help a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep moving the epoxy around and spreading it over our surface here. And we'll check back in with y'all later when we're ready to sand and uh, coat the rest of it. So, you guys have a great day, we'll see you later.